Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and welcome to the final one of my woodland inspired art tutorials from this series. Today's project is going to be a robin with some holly and berries, a nice wintry woodland scene. So let's get painting. So I've provided some line art for this project and that is available on my website and you can download it at the link in the description box below. But if you want to draw your own robin, then uh, Tuesday's video, which I uploaded earlier this week, uh, which I'll put a link up here to, shows you how to draw a robin in different kind of in different poses from different angles and kind of we do some practice sketching for that. So if you do a few practice sketches and then you decide on the perfect composition of your robin and sketch it and then we're going to surround it with holly leaves and berries. I'll just show you really quickly how I've drawn those. To sketch my holly I've started with clusters of simple leaf shapes like this and you notice they don't look very holly-ly, holly-ly, holly-like so far um, because they're not spiky. So I started with those outlines I can put a nice wavy line up the middle of them. And then I'm starting going over the line again and just putting in a few spikes. Let's do this one. And then some of the spikes I'm curving inwards. So you're kind of seeing the back of the leaf. So let's do that a bit more on here. So this bit would be like the back of the leaf and you'd either do it lighter or darker than the other side. And then berries, we'll do some circles, some of them slightly overlapping, something like that. And then they've got like um, a little dark bit in where the end of the berry is and they're kind of facing in towards like the stem is this way so that little knobbly bit would be opposite where the stem would be like that so they're all kind of yeah on the outsides of those little clusters and then each of the berries is going to have a highlight or maybe even two maybe sometimes three little highlighted areas and you want to imagine that light's coming from one direction or another and then they'd be shaded on the other side so there'd be a darker side as well. So for the equipment I'm using today, first of all I'm using a watercolour block and this one is from Etcher. It's a 20 centimetre square and, um, and for full disclosure I have to tell you that uh, they sent me this for free to try out um, but I do like it, I keep using it so um, the paper is very nice. I've got a couple of brushes. I'm mostly going to be using the um, size six round, um, but then a smaller brush is really useful for doing some tiny little details. So I've got this one as a size two. I'm going to be putting some highlights on my holly berries and I've got a couple of options for this. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this, which is a masking liquid pen. Um, but you could use some masking fluid on a brush or you could just paint everything and then add some white highlights at the end. So a little white pen or some white gouache or something or some bleed proof white, this stuff. Anything that you can add a nice white highlight with at the end. I've got my clean water and a paper towel. Um, I've got a pencil and a razor just for um, transferring my sketch. And then the paints that I'm gonna be using. So I'm using five colors today. French ultramarine, sepia, but you could use any brown really. I've got quinacridone gold, but like a warm yellow, uh, a yellow orange is nice. So yellow ochre would be a good one. Um, this is a permanent rose, so it's kind of pinky red. And then because I wanted a really bright, vibrant red um, for the berries, I'm using Windsor red, which is really bright. Um, something like a cadmium red or a scarlet lake or something like that would work just as well. So as always, I'll say you don't need to use the exact same colours that I've got, um, but I'm just letting you know what they are for reference. The first thing I'm going to do is transfer my line drawing onto my watercolour paper 
Um, if you don't know how to do that and you want a little bit of help, then I've got another video that uh, shows you how to do that. And there'll be a link for that in the description as well. So I've done my uh, pencil outline. I'm just gonna go over some of the areas with an eraser and I'm just very gently trying to pick up the darkest bits. So especially I want to kind of get this line down here as faint as possible because I want this area to be quite pale. So anything that's quite dark down there is gonna show through the watercolor. So I want to get it so that I can see it um, it might be difficult for the camera to pick up, but uh, you'll know that it's there. So I want to start with our re Robin, and I'm going to start with his red breast. But I'm not going to make it red to start with. I'm going to use some of this quinacridone gold. And I'm going to just paint that on. And I'm going to be quite careful, like down his front and around the beak and then up to the eye. But then I'm leaving kind of a few millimetres uh, before I get to that line. Because what I want to do is to clean my brush and I'm just gonna go in with water and blend that out. And if I add clean water below and just allow that colour to ever so slightly move. And I can blend it out into his head a little bit as well. And then if it looks like that colour's going too far, you can take a clean brush and just push it back. There you go. And then I'm going to make it red by dropping a little bit of permanent rose into that gold colour. A little bit more on the front and then I want to bring it down here. And again, I can control where that colour's going by using some clean water. Well, taking the excess water off my brush and then pushing it around. A little bit more gold at the bottom there. And smooth that line out. And then when that dries, that should give me a nice soft uh, red breast for the bed. While it's drying, I can go in with some sepia. You could use any brown. Um, I like sepia because it's nice and neutral. Um, if you wanted to use a more ready brown, then I'd add a little bit of blue into it and just make it just that little bit kind of uh, more kind of on the grey side. So a little bit more water in there, lighten it up a bit. I'm going to paint in all of the wing and the back of the bird. Try and get the shape nice. And then I am going to just run it into that gold area. like that. So I could see a little hard line was just forming around the bottom of this gold area. So I just wanted to introduce a little more water and allow that to blend downwards as well. Now that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to come back a little bit later and add some more details, um, but that's that's the basics of the robin done. Now to do the leaves, holly leaves, nice kind of bluey colour. And I want to make these fairly loose. So I've drawn in the outlines um, and they're kind of 
quite precise with little pointy bits on like you'd get on holly but as I'm painting them I want to allow the colours to kind of run a little bit and do their own thing so I'm mixing up a blue no I'm mixing up my French ultramarine with some of that quinacridone gold to make green and I want a few kind of different greens um, so I'll change this mix as I go along but I've got like a bluey area here and a, and a more kind of greeny yellowy area here and I'll dip my brush into different parts of that mix and I'll go back and add different kind of combinations of those colours as I'm doing these leaves. So um, let's start with this one here and what I want to do is I want to kind of roughly paint in half the leaf so I've drawn a nice kind of centre line for the leaf and I'm going to draw a line kind of next to that and I'm going to pull it out to kind of get the basic shape of the leaf I'm going to mix that colour up a little bit more and then I'm just going to use the point of my brush to flick out some little points like that then I'm going to do the other side this one I want to be a lighter green a little bit more yellow in it so again, up that centre part of the leaf, pull it out down the side and then this one, I just want a couple of little flicks out at the top, give me those little pointy bits and then I'll go in and refine this centre line a little bit. and I can drop in some darker and lighter shades of green. I'm going to do this one next. I don't mind too much that they're, um, if they bleed into one another. So there's the center line. And get a bit more blue on there. Do the outside. Flick, flick, flick. A bit more gold for the centre. And just a couple of flicks out at the top, I think, on that side. Uh, I want a lighter one for behind, so I'm just adding a little bit more water in my brush. So that's that one side of the leaf painted and flick, flick, flick at the top I can use the very tip of my brush to get some nice sharp points on those flicks a bit more blue on the other side flick, flick, flick something like that now I'm using this permanent rose to make the berries and I'm going to just create these circles here and make sure I leave a little highlight. I can also mix it in a little bit with that quinacridone gold. I can also use some of this scarlet and just get me slightly different reds. Make this one a little lighter, allow the colours to run a little bit. And then another one behind. So little berries, each with a little highlight. So bird's drying, so I'm going to do this section up here, exactly the same way. Um, some leaves, let's turn the paper a little bit. So one swish of the brush up one side of the leaf. Let's go in with a little bit more colour up there. And we can go flick, 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 flick at the top. Let's do the other side. Flick, flick, flick. I want 
want this one to be darker. So it's a lot more blue in there. Flick, flick, flick. And just tidy them up a little bit if I want to. You don't have to. You can leave these as loose and as free as you like. And Yeah, I'm going to leave that one there. I'll add a little bit of shadow to it later, I think. I'm going to do these berries. Same thing, same mix of colours. And if they bleed into the leaves, that's absolutely fine. In fact, that's quite nice. Um, so yeah, so one more with that quinacridone gold in it. Another one there that's scarlet. And one at the bottom. And then clean my brush and just do a lighter one here just by pulling some of that water out. Bird is dry now, so I can do these ones here. So let's pull this leaf out and then flick, 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 flick. Now, this one's going to be harder because this one goes behind the robin. So I'm going to turn my paper around. Get the shape of it in there and then quite carefully when I get up to the robin's tail paint around that and then out the other side. So I have to be a bit more careful with this one than I am with some of the others. Let's do the other side. got more colour on one side than the other so I can add more colour in there but I can also use a dry, no, a clean damp brush to pull some of the pigment out of the, the other side. And then there's one out here and this does the same kind of thing. It goes behind these berries and it goes behind the robin here. Comes out up here this little section of berries now. Nice pinky one there. And one with the quinacridone gold. And then one in between them in this scarlet. I've got quite a bit of a bleed going on there from the berries into the leaf. I quite like that. What I can do with this leaf is just make a, it look like a little bit of it is, is folded back just by putting a little darker kind of pointy triangle just on one side of it. Um, I can do that in a couple of other places as well. So there, I could have one there. And I think one up here as well. So just along the edge. Of the leaf, kind of making it look like, hopefully, like you're seeing like the underside of it just in that bit there. 
I'm switching to my small brush now and I'm going to put in detail along the um, the robin's wing and um, give him some like feathers. So there's a little kind of S curve here and then I can just darken that edge of the wing down the side. Maybe put in a few little feathery marks like this. And then I can put in some lines down the tail like that. Went a bit overboard at the end. See if I can, no. Oh well. Went too far there, never mind. I'm going to outline these feathers here, like the wing feathers. And then again, a few feathery marks, but maybe a little lighter this time on the robin's kind of underside here. Just a few little dabs and dashes like that. I'm going to put in the eye and there are a couple of options with the eye. You could paint the eye and then add a little white highlight with a white pen afterwards. I've got here, I've got a, a, a masking fluid pen and I'm just going to add a little dot in the eye there. Um, wait for that to dry and then I'll paint it in. But yes, you could just use a little dot from a white pen or a tiny spot of white gouache or white paint on the top. And you can do the same for the berries. You can use the little, uh, the white to leave those little highlights there as well. While I've got this sepia, I want to paint in the little branch that the bird is sitting on. I'll paint his legs in in a minute when all of this underneath is dry. In the meantime, I can go back to my leaves and paint a few more details on those. And if you want to, you can paint in some like vein lines as well, just softly. and they don't need to be all over. Now, I think this area on the chest didn't dry terribly smoothly. So I'm gonna go over it again, do exactly the same thing again. It's also gonna have the effect of making it lighter and brighter and making it stand out more. I didn't mean to go over the edge there. Let's try and be a bit more careful with that. So I'm using that gold to paint all over that same area again. The water to blend out the edges. Clean water, just painting it around the edge like that and allowing it to blend out. And anywhere I've got any harsh lines or areas where I don't want the paint flowing, I can use my damp brush to push, push the color back and then I can paint the center with just a little bit more of that permanent rose, just to make him look a bit brighter there. Now these leaves are all dried. I can put in bird's legs. So nice straight line and I'm just using the sepia and then his feet curled around the branches. Another leg in there. It's 
something like that. And I might want to darken this one a little bit. And actually I think some of the details on the wing just have faded and they're, they're not standing out so much anymore. So I'm going to go over and do those again. Just the same colour, just a little bit darker. Fade this one out a bit. Just a few little more feathery marks, wherever you think. Our robin is going to start looking a lot better when we put his eye and his beak in. And to do that, mix a little bit of that ultramarine blue into the sepia and you get a nice dark colour. Paint the bottom of the beak in. Use my little brush. And then wash my brush out to do the top because the top of the beak is lighter than the bottom. And then I'm going to try and paint nice and carefully a nice circular eye. I think that needs to be a bit darker. I can mix a bit of blue into my red there and get a, like a plummy purple uh, colour which I can use to create some shadow on these berries. So I can paint it in fairly loosely wherever the berries are kind of hidden behind one another and then wash my brush and just use the clean water on it to blend that out. So let's do that over here. So this berry is kind of sitting behind that one. There's one there and then just another little shadow there. And then a clean damp brush to just soften those lines. When everything is completely dry, you can rub out any visible pencil lines that are still left. And you can also carefully rub away your masking tape as well. Either that or add your highlight back in with a white pen, just to give him a little glint in his eye. So there is my finished Robin painting um, and I, I'm happy with most things apart from the way that the paint settled on the bird's breast there. Um, when I did it in practice it worked out much better, um, although I prefer the shape of the bird in this one. There's always things that you like and dislike about a painting. Every time you do one there's something that you're like, oh I'm not sure about that. But on the whole um, I'm quite happy with this little cheerful fellow. Um, I think he'd look great on a Christmas card, um, so let me know if you use him for that. Uh, like I said, that line art is available on my website to download if you'd like to use that. And um, yeah, this is the last, the final one of my uh, woodland-inspired art tutorials. 
Um, so this is the end of the, the season. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to those of you who subscribed. Um, I'm going to be taking a few weeks break before coming back with my next season. And if you'd like to know when that's going to be and what I'm going to be doing, then the best place to find that out is on my mailing list. I'll be sending one out this weekend uh, with details of what's coming up and what to look out for. So um, I hope you'll find me on there. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye.